Thank you for staying with us. We turn to judicial matters now. A federal high court sitting in Abuja set aside its own judgment directing the Senate president to swearing Dr. Obiora Okonkwo as a senator representing Anambra Central Senatorial District. Justice John Zoho set aside the judgment on the grounds that the plaintiff, Dr. Obiora, misled the court to get the consent judgment. Delivering ruling in an application for variation of the judgment filed by INEC to enable it conduct the Anambra Central Senatorial District rerun election on January 13th. Justice Oho said his judgment is liable to be set aside because it is not based on merit. Justice Oho says the dictates of the doctrine of precedence clearly spells out the fact that the Court of Appeal decisions take precedence over and above any decision of any lower court. The trial judge disagreed with Dr. Obiora on his claim that he was not a party to the appeals before the appellate court, which gave rise to the rerun elections. Meanwhile, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, says that INEC has listed his name in the rerun election schedule for January 13, 2018, even though he has announced that he will not participate in the poll. In a statement, Dr. Ngege explains that his numerous supporters in Anambra Central Senatorial District have been informed that he will not take part in the election, which he describes as a charade. He adds that in a letter dated January 11, 2016, he withdrew from the rerun when it was earlier scheduled for March 2016. He says his party, APC, accepted and promptly wrote INEC for his substitution and organized a primary election to choose a replacement, which INEC rejected. He says the matter is in court, but INEC has decided to go ahead with the election without his party fielding a candidate. And that's all from this end. We rejoin Melinda in Lagos. Melinda, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. More legal stories. Now, the Court of Appeal in Lagos has upheld the order of interim forfeiture of about $6 million and another 2.4 billion naira traced to the accounts of the wife of the former president, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. Last year, Justice Mojisola Olatore grew granted an order of interim forfeiture of the sum of $6 billion naira and another 2 billion naira traced to Mrs. Jonathan's account number which was domiciled with two Nigerian commercial banks. The EFCC is alleging that the money was suspected to be proceeds of unlawful activities and wants the court to freeze the account and urgently too to prevent her from moving the funds. But the counsel to Mrs. Jonathan, Mike Ozekume, asked the Court of Appeal to declare as unconstitutional the provisions of Section 17 of the Advanced Free Fraud and Other Fraud-Related Offences Act of 2006, an argument the Court nullified and upheld the interim forfeiture of the various sums of money belonging to Mrs. Jonathan. And still on legal matters, there was a mild drama at the River State High Court today when suspected ritual killer, if I indicate, was arraigned before Justice Adolphus Inibili for allegedly killing an eight-year-old girl, Chikam So Fever, after raping her and cutting off her genitals last year. The suspect gave a loud shout when his case was mentioned and refused to take his plea. He then collapsed after the trial judge ordered an examination to be done on him to find out his mental state. The court entered a not guilty plea for him. The two accused persons, Ogochuku Namiro and Sergeant John Bosco Okeze, were also arraigned alongside the suspected virtual killer. The matter has been adjourned to January the 16th for definite hearing. The Nigerian military says its officers have killed suspected militant leader, popularly known as Karaway, who is accused of killing a British missionary, Iron Square, in River State. A statement from the Joint Tax Force Operation Delta Safe confirms that the kidnapped kingpin was killed along with some of his gang members during a gun battle. Karaway, who reportedly kidnapped four British missionaries on October the 13th, 2017, in Delta State, was arrested on Thursday by the JTF during the clearance operation. He had reportedly lured the soldiers to his hideout. On sighting the troops, his gang members opened fire, but the military overpowered them. 
Now to some business-related matters. Nigeria will save more than 20 billion naira annually from local sea checks on Boeing 737 Classic as Aero Contractors is now the first commercial airline in the country to provide that service. This is coming from the representative of the Minister of Aviation at the rollout ceremony in Lagos. Also at the occasion, the Executive Director of Operations from the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, Mr. Aminu Ismail, said the organization's investment in the aviation industry has paid off. This Boeing 737 is the reason why officials of the Asset Management Company of Nigeria, friends and management of Nigeria's oldest airline, aero contractors are gathered within the hangar of the carrier. It's time to celebrate a recent milestone. It's the first sea check carried out on a Boeing 737 aircraft by a commercial airline after the demise of the former national carrier. The sea check is performed approximately every 20 to 24 months or after a specific amount of flying hours. The chief executive of the airline describes the uneasy route to this feat after a proposed technical partner backed out. 90% of its customers are in Nigeria. And if he does that, then 500 workers in this country will lose their job. And thankfully, the directorate of uh, airworthiness at that time um, gave us all the support and said, listen, we're going to partner with you. We're not only going to regulate you. We're going to guide you to make sure that you get the support. For the airline that is fully Amcon owned, Amcon is happy its investment is paying off. And the federal government feels the same way. We are extremely proud that the team and the staff in Aero today have proved us right and we can hold our heads high and say we took the right decisions by supporting Aero. Nigeria experienced huge capital flight of nothing less than $1.8 million and $3 million per aircraft that left our shores for sea checks. And there are more than 30 of such aircraft operating, so you can do the maths. Then it's straight to the aircraft and a look inside as well. Aero contractors may just have played itself back into the mainstream as that earlier received certification from the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority to handle sea checks on Boeing 737 Classics from September 2017. The number of active voice subscribers in Nigeria has dropped and has the numbers on business news. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that Nigeria recorded 140 million active voice subscriptions and 93.26 million active internet subscriptions in the third quarter of 2017. Well, according to the NBS report, while active voice subscriptions fell by 2.21% from the second quarter of 2017, Active internet subscriptions increased by 1.22% from the third quarter of 2016, but then it declined by 0.55% from the second quarter of 2017. The report shows that Airtel, Nine Mobile, Globacom and MTN were the four largest voice communication providers in the third quarter of 2017. The momentum in crude oil price, which hit $70 per barrel, must be invested in Nigeria's sovereign wealth fund. And that's according to the associate professor of finance in Nasarawa State, Mr. Uche Uwaleke, who spoke to us earlier today. The implementation of the capital component of the, budget, of the 2018 budget, we have identified some capital projects. If you recall, the power works and housing is taking the largest share of uh, over 500 billion. Okay, so we need to ensure that that money is uh, fully cashed back 
The Minister of Works and Housing, the other day, was even talking about um, uh, money owed to contractors amounting to 2.8 trillion. Okay, that's well in excess of even the total budget for the, his ministry for the entire year. So the important thing is implementing the capital component of the budget. Now, if we have assets, as I said earlier on, we should uh, uh, put it aside. We have the infrastructure fund. Okay, the management of this fund, yes, we read with the, uh, we have the sovereign wealth fund that is managing it. But if we have some assets, I, 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 I wish to suggest that the uh, federal government, in consultation with the states, the National Economic Council, and this time around, the National Assembly too should be, should be involved. Members from, the, from the different uh, constitu constituencies should identify these uh, constituency projects, these capital projects, you know, that must be, um, you know, uh, implemented in order to impact positively on the, on the welfare of uh, the citizens. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has suspended trading in the shares of 7-Up Butlin Company following a takeover bid from majority shareholder Afelka. And this comes as shareholders of the company approved the scheme of agreement for the acquisition of 125 Naira per share after a court-ordered meeting in Lagos. A successful acquisition of the outstanding 26.8% shares held by Afelka is expected to see 7-Up removed from the Nigerian Stock Exchange's trading list. And talking about trading today, investors are taking a break from eight straight sessions of bull run, ending the day's transaction slightly lower. Shimeze Obiwago has more for us. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Nigerian equities market retreated today after four days of bullish trading this week. In line with most analysts' expectations, proceedings actually started very well. That as at midday, the index was up 1.33%. However, there was a lot of profit taken, and that took a major toll on the banking stocks, particularly Zenith, Axis, GT, and UBA, which pulled the overall market index into the red zone, down 0.33%. Despite the drop, market fundamental remains strong with a lot of liquidity in the market. Transaction value today was about 14 billion naira and over 1 billion shares were traded. So far, the market has gained 12% year to date and this week alone, the market gained 10.21% and traders say this is quite unusual for a start of the year and should be celebrated. According to them, Next week, we'll see the market normalize and the gains will continue, but not as much as what was recorded this week, pending when the full year earnings results will start coming in. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Well, as for major world stock markets, they have ended the last trading day for the week all in the green, except for Japan's Nikkei index. Its strong quarterly results push U.S. markets to more record highs. Let's see the figures for today. Thanks a lot for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Wawodo. The rest of the news at 10 continues with Melinda. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Anne. Governors of the southeastern part of Nigeria met in Enugu State today to fine tune the burial arrangement for the late former Vice President Dr. Alex Ekweme, scheduled for January the 19th to February the 11th. Dr. Ekweme died on November the 19th, 2017, in a London hospital where he was being treated for a lower respiratory tract infection. Apart from the funeral, the governors also discussed many developmental issues. Education now in Ogun State is getting a boost as the governor, Ibikuna Amosu, says he's satisfied with the progress being made in the relocation of the Moshud Abiola Polytechnic Abeokuta to Ipokia area in Ogun West Senatorial District. The governor also spoke on the admission plans for the institution. 
Brick by brick, the new site of the Ogun State Polytechnic is coming together as action is expedited on its relocation to Ipokia. It's in Ogun West Senatorial District, and the arrival of the governor, Ibikuli Amusu, signifies the beginning of his inspection of work done so far. He's conducted around the hostels and faculties by the managing director of Ogun State Properties and Investment Corporation. I don't know of any school that I've started this way in Ogun State. I am a product of uh, uh, this Ogun State Poly now. And we started with just one some fourth classroom. Uh, fourth classroom of those days with probably wooden window and all of that. I am proud and I'm happy to note and to say that uh, I don't know of any, any, let me even limit myself to Ogun State that I've started like this. The governor also touches on the admission process for the institution. We are ready to fly, we are ready to go. Indeed, the portal was open and uh, we were shocked in the field of in the first two days, if you look at the numbers. The resumption of academic activities at the Polytechnic in Epokia is like a new birth, which is hoped will finally resolve the long-standing disagreement over its relocation. Still ahead on the news at 10, Confederation of African Football changes the format of Champions League and Confederation Cup to match European calendar. That's in sports news. Stay with us.